Howdy. In this lesson, we're going to be applying our linear panels that we derived uh, for the vortex panel method. So just as for the constant panels, we're going to be dividing our airfoil up into a whole bunch of segments, which are going to be our vortex panels. Now, the difference between the linear panel method and the constant panel method is that we're interested in the gammas at these points. So instead of looking at the gammas over an entire panel, we want to see the gamma 1, gamma 2 at the points between the panels. And the reason for that is we can assume that the linear distribution is uh, constant across a panel, meaning that, or we're assuming that this is consistent, there, there is continuity of this, um, the, the panel strength. So we're saying that uh, the gamma at the right end of panel one is going to be equal to the gamma at the left end of panel two. And we're still going to be interested in the upwash on each of these panels. And as before, we're setting the gamma at the trailing edge equal to zero. Now we're going to call this gamma six is equal to the gamma at the trailing edge is equal to zero. We're also saying that the upwash of each panel is equal to zero. So we can say this for all i. So what does this mean? If we have n panels, this means that we will have n gamma values, ignoring the one on the end here. Right? So we have five panels, we'll have five gamma values, and we'll have n w's values. What this leads to is a system of equations where we have n unknowns, our n gammas, and in equations. So this is a system of equations that we can solve without any uh, other assumptions or having to neglect any of our upwash values, like we did for our constant panel case. And our goal here is going to be the same as the constant panel, which is to arrive at a system of equations that looks like this CW term, this uh, upwash coefficient term, multiplied by our vector of gammas. And then added to that, we're going to have our contribution of the um, uniform flow. And that's going to affect the panels due to alpha minus theta, where theta is the actual slope of the panels. And that's overall needs to be equal to zero, as we said before. So how do we actually find these upwash coefficients? So let's look at our first panel and say that we have some gamma one here. So gamma one and it's linearly varying down to zero. And we'll have a second panel where we're trying to calculate the upwash coefficients. So if you remember, we're saying that CW21 is going to be equal to the upwash on panel two due to this gamma one. And that's going to be divided by gamma one. So how are we actually calculating this? Well, we're going to say that this is going to be equal to the velocity of this panel, where gamma 1 is equal to 1, to 1, and this guy is equal to 0. So the velocity of the panel can be written as a function of gamma 1, gamma 2, the position of this first point, which we're calling x1, the position of the second point, which is x2, 
and then finally the point where we're trying to find the upwash which is going to be x midpoint of panel 2. So let's go ahead and write all these in. So this is going to be our x1 location, this is our x2 location, and the place where we're trying to find the midpoint is xm2. And let's go ahead and write this in for good measure, this is x3. And in order to find the upwash, we need to dot this with the normal of panel 2. So the normal is simply this direction normal to the panel. Okay, sweet. So this is the velocity of the panel and we're dotting it with our normal. Now remember that we're saying that gamma 1 is present but everything else is equal to 0. So we are neglecting the contribution of any gamma 2 at this point. And also, we're dividing by gamma 1. Well, our panel, or the, the, the velocity due to our panel, uh, varies linearly with gamma 1. So if we divide by gamma 1, that's the same thing as setting this guy here equal to 1. So in order to find our upwash coefficient, we'll just plug in gamma 1 equal to 1, gamma 2 equal to 0, and then also all of our geometry into our linearly varying panel uh, function. So this changes just a little bit whenever we're looking at any of the other gammas. So gamma 1 is unique in that it only affects one panel. But if we add a gamma 2, gamma 2 over here actually affects both panel 1 and panel 2. So let's look at that situation. So we'll draw the same panels that have some x1, x2, x3, and we're still interested in finding the upwash at the midpoint of panel 2. But now we're going to find the upwash due to the contribution of gamma 2. So what does this look like? Now we're going to have to find the velocity due to two different panels. So the coefficient of upwash on panel 2, on the midpoint of panel 2, due to gamma 2 is going to be the velocity of panel 1. So we're still going to have gamma 1, gamma 2, x1, x2, and we're still looking at x at the midpoint of panel 2. But now we have to add the second panel. So what does the second panel look like? Well, this is going to be gamma 2, gamma 3, and then the geometry is defined by x2 and x3, but we're still trying to find the upwash at the midpoint of panel 2. So this term is still going to be xm2. And once again, we're not interested in any gammas except for this single one. So we're not interested in gamma 1, we're not interested in gamma 3, and we're going to set gamma 2 in both of these cases to 1. Once we have that, we need to dot this with our normal in order to get our upwash. So this is how we find the coefficient of any of the other panels, we just, or any of the other gammas that have two panels associated with them. We simply add up the contributions of both panels. So once we have our CWs, we're going to follow the same, uh, same set of steps. We're going to solve for gamma, or for all of our gamma values. Once we have that, we can find velocity and stream function everywhere. Once we have that, we can find the pressure on panel, on our uh, actual airfoil. And then from there, we can solve for lift and the moment on the airfoil, which is usually everything that we're interested in 
with the vortex panel method.